What's up everyone, I'm Callum Montos, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some battles in the Fossil Cup running River Room since someone requested it a few days ago and I was able to go on a crazy 23 and 2 run with this team on the first day of using it. Now I do want to mention that I dropped all the way down into the low 1900 elo range trying to get those 6 wins with the Fossil teams that I showcased in yesterday's video so that definitely is the main reason I had such a dominant run with this team. I did however carry on battling after midnight and had a much more normal run with the team still going positive in every reset bar one but I'm going to showcase some battles from across both days so with that being said let's just get into the question of the day We've had a lot of stale limited metas in recent seasons of the Go Battle League, but I want to know which limited meta would you like to see returning for next season? Let me know in the comment section down below, and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle league, Galissapod into Ferrothorn. So this is a fairly neutral matchup here. We are going to see a bit of a delay in the starting of this battle, but anyways, we are going to go straight for an area lace here, thrown just before they make it to a potential Thunder. If the opponent goes straight for a Power Whip, I'm actually happy to let that go through but since they do build up to a potential thunder definitely gonna shield respect the damage and the opponent's actually gonna swap out into their skarmory so this is fine with me you're gonna fire off the liquidation we are resisting the steel wing damage so it's really only the sky attack or the brave bird that we've got to worry about and we're gonna swap into our bronzong perfectly catching the charge move the opponent full sends the brave bird there we already dropped their defense with a liquidation so now they are quad debuffed the maximum debuff they can have to their defense which means i can go for a full confusion farm down they make it to a last second brave bird there but it does doesn't matter. They're now going to come in with Polyrath. Honestly, I just blind through there and we go for the payback. But of course, very risky to no shield that from that Polyrath. So they end up shielding anyways. We can now fire off an Airy Lace here. Airy Lace is going to be no shielded by the Polyrath. It doesn't do too much damage there. It is non stab, but it doesn't really matter. I can resist everything they can possibly throw. They go for the Icy Wind. We go for one extra Shadow Claw. Go for the Airy Lace. We did wait one turn just to make sure they don't make the catch. And now we've got the final shield. We can come in with the Reverie. I'm just going to play it safe. I know Ferrothorn. It's pretty much energy dry. We shield this up. It's an icy wind. It doesn't matter. No drop to my attack. He's going to be enough to help this Ferrothorn as we full send the overheat, taking out the Ferrothorn there, getting the Poison Jab farm down, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next battle we see a Ludicolo now, of course I've got two Steel types in the back, but I realise if I stay in, I fire off the Charge Reef here, I'm probably going to grab an early Shield Advantage, so going to go for the Aerial Ace, grab that Shield, then swap into my Bronzong. Now the opponent is staying in for absolutely ages here before eventually swapping into Arcanine, but they stayed in for way too long. We can now fire off a Psy Shock, and Psy Shock is going to grab that final Shield from the opponent, and we make it to a second Psy Shock because they stayed in for too long there, and Psy Shock gets the KO up against the Arcanine, huge misplay from my opponent, but like I mentioned, this is the 1900 elo range right now, so at this point, just going to safely shield this up, and I'm feeling pretty confident I can beat anything in the back, especially an Azumarill, which I didn't see much in this cup. Honestly, it's not that great up against the meta, but River Room going to have a field day right now, going for the Acid Spray, dealing huge damage with the Poison Jabs, and this is just going to be a Play Rough or an Ice Beam as well. Play Rough is double resisted damage. I safely no shield just for the sake of it. Get the Poison Jab farm down, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to up over there, into next game, we see a Polyrath in the lead, so a great lead matchup for me. And the great thing about Bronzong as well is that even if they don't have Polyrath in the lead, if we say swap into Bronzong, then Polyrath kind of has nowhere to go. So we are going to no shield here, and the opponent's going to go for the Icy Wind, fine with me. We are now going to swap into Bronzong. I realized I wasn't going to get a full Shadow Claw farm down, and I didn't really want to use my energy on my Galissapod. So instead, we swap into Bronzong, going for the Snipe with the Confusion damage. We bait out a Shadow Ferrothorn, which honestly doesn't help me too much because Rev Room has a very good matchup into Ferrothorn, as of course we've seen already. Overheat does insane damage in that matchup. But either way, I'm happy to just let the Bronzong go down to the Power Whip there. We are going to come in with the... Galissapod, I do believe we come out with an Aerial Ace already loaded, but they've got a Bastiodon in the back. Now, this is actually really tricky for me. Gonna fire off the Liquidation, grab a shield from the opponent. We don't get the defense drop, which is very unfortunate, but we are going to shield this up here as the opponent fires off the charge view they're gonna go for the flamethrower and the opponent swaps back into polyrath i believe this will just be an icy wind so i have to no shield this icy wind gonna drop my attack so i'm just gonna drop their defense immediately of course acid spray gonna do 
no damage whatsoever like literally i think that was one damage there we're not gonna go and fire off the overheat we are debuffed in our attack but they're double debuffed in their defense so i think my play now is to bank an overheat swap into galissapod and the threat of a liquidation should hopefully grab the final shield from this bastion they go for the flamethrower we're not making it to the liquidation we have to settle for the aerial ace but aerial ace grabs that final shield we can now full send the overheat and of course from this range overheat will get the ko up against the bastion and I'm able to take that game. So GG's took up over there, and likewise, I haven't really seen too many Bastard on in this meta either, but in low elo, you will see probably a bit more variety actually than in the sort of like mid to higher elo range. But we're now gonna shield this as the opponent goes for an airy lace. Fine with me. I'm now gonna over farm, firing off a liquidation here. No point in baiting. Liquidation will be enough damage to get the KO. And they come in with a Pelipper. So gonna swap straight away into my Bronzong. Gonna no shield this. Bronzong is pretty bulky, so you can live two weather balls very comfortably. They're gonna swap into Ferrothorn, and I'm gonna fire off the payback here. So payback will be coming through. Payback goes unshielded. We actually win CMP there. So I found that there seemed to be IV dependent. Some Ferrothorn one CMP up against me and sometimes I won but either way don't really mind they're gonna just barely outpace me to the next charge view but I don't mind that either they go for a power whip fine with me we can come in with either Pokemon really we're actually gonna come in with the Galissapod and then I will try and make a catch onto the next charge roof there on my river room and of course a power whip gonna be double resisted doesn't do ma much damage whatsoever they come in with the pelipper i'm just gonna no shield this as the opponent goes for the weather ball we can make it to an acid spray acid spray not gonna do much damage but they kind of have to shield at this point so acid spray grabs the first shield from the opponent we've dropped their defense and we're actually able to get a simultaneous ko and now we can come back in with galissapod no point in throwing a charge roof there we get the shadow claw farm down and i'm able to take that game so GG stuck up there into next battle, see Whiskash in the lead. So definitely good to see it here because of course they can do nothing. They can only throw resisted damage into a Galissapod. But obviously a Mud Boy up against my back line is going to be quite prob uh, problematic there. I was going to say problematic and troublesome combined and it came out as like troublesome. Anyways, we're going to no shield the next move here. They did shield the first charge move, which I thought was quite interesting. We're now going to fire off the next liquidation straight away. Once again, we do wait one turn just to make sure they don't catch. And they're actually going to double shield their Whisk Cash. So maybe that means they're weak to Galissapod in the back. I'm not sure. It's like really hard to tell sometimes at low elo if there's a reasoning behind the opponent shielding twice in the lead matchup or if they just don't know any better but anyways at this point i'm just gonna let galissapod go down we put them into range where confusion will be able to take them out there so we get the farm down before they make it to another charge move and they come in with lucario so i'm not gonna bother firing off the charge move straight away instead the opponent tries to catch the side shot which was very smart onto a ferrothorn but unfortunately it doesn't work out for them we can just no shield the power there of course that does very little damage and now i can just no shield once again it's pretty clear that they don't have thunder otherwise they probably would throw it or maybe they're just baiting and they just can't help it but either way we're gonna fire off the overheat we've seen it many times already getting the one shot up against the ferrothorn and i don't really need to shield here but i'm gonna shield anyways we've got another overheat loaded we're double debuffed in our attack but that's not gonna stop us from once again getting the one shot up against a lucario this time and i'm able to take that game so GG's took up over there into the next game. We see a Polyrath in the lead. So again, a very good lead matchup for us. I did find that Galissapod did win a lot of leads here. And the opponent's going to swap into a Alolan Sandslash. And this is still fine. Unless they're running Aerial Ace, which honestly is kind of a forgotten move. Which, you know, if someone did throw an Aerial Ace into me, I probably wouldn't respect the damage there. But unless they're running Aerial Ace, we will resist the typical moveset here. So going to no shield as they go for an Ice Punch. Not doing too much damage. They will make it to another charge move here. So I think I probably will shield this just to either grab the final shield from the opponent or potentially just regain alignment here. So gonna fire off the Aerial Ace here. Aerial Ace will go unshielded. We get the KO and they come in with a Ferrothorn. So at this point, this is gonna be game over. We come in with the Rever Room. We can just safely no shield the first charge reef here. Even if they do go for a Thunder, which they do, they're not gonna be able to Bullet Seed farm me down. So they swap into Polyrath. We can come in with the Bronzong and I'm just gonna commit to a full Confusion farm down here. I'm not even gonna bother throwing a charge reef. I don't need to. The opponent, once again, just going to fire off the Icy Wind. I don't know what the second charge move is. 
if it's like schooled or dynamic punch then they probably should go for that but either way perfectly fine with me we go for one extra confusion go for the payback not the perfect timing there but also i did just hit 100 energy so i kind of there's no point in going for good timing there and throwing a second confusion this payback grabs the final shield so we swap straight away into rev of room just gonna play it safe use my final shield they go for power which whip which we well uh, wow we go they go for power whip which we should have lived anyways and we fire off the overheat once again taking out the verathon and i'm able to take that game so gg to open there into next battle and the opponent's gonna say swap into quagsire so fine with me we're gonna fire for liquidation and the fact that they're swapping into quagsire straight away despite the fact that their lead matchup was fairly neutral and actually probably slightly positive in their favor means maybe they're running a double mod boy team which if that's the case then we might be in trouble here so gonna fire off the aerial ace and grab the shield from the opponent and at this point if i do correctly shield up a stone edge they're gonna make it to another charge but it should just be a mud bomb so at this point happy to let the move go through here it will be resisted damage they go for the mud bomb there fine with me we're going to see the Ferrothorn comes back in, so I think I'm going to fire off the Aerial Ace, but eventually I will try and catch a move onto my Bronzong. We're going to swap here, try and make the catch, and the opponent is running a second Mud Boy with Swampert in the back, so this is looking a little bit scary for us. Of course, we've got no shields remaining. We go for the Psy Shock there. Honestly, I probably could have committed to a payback instead because Hydro Cannon wouldn't take us out, but an Earthquake certainly will get the job done. We are now going to have to come back in with our Galissapod. We're going to overfarm here, fire off just before they make it to the Hydro Cannon. From this, from this range, Hydro Cannon will get the KO as well, and they do end up shielding. So, honestly, Rev of Room, I'm not certain if we can get the Poison Jet Farm down here. We come back in with the Rev of Room, and they come in with the Ferrothorn. So, at this point, going to no shield this. The opponent is going to go for the power. What am I talking about? We don't have any shields anyways and at this point i'm thinking okay they're just running power up here but no they're running thunder as well they just didn't throw it the first time around for some reason and i realized here like if i go for an overheat maybe i can undercharge this get the poison jab farm down come out with a second overheat loaded but no unfortunately even fully undercharged that still gets the ko and we get mud shot farm down there and even if I farm to 100 energy, a double debuffed Asus Spray would not take out that Swampert either. So, very unfortunate, but it is what it is. GG's to that opponent there. And speaking of Asus Spray, we see a Ferrothorn running Asus Spray, which is quite interesting. I'm going to fire off the Aerial Ace here, and then I will swap and try and make a catch on the next charge move. And we're perfectly able to catch that charge move there. The opponent goes for the power this time around since we were debuffed. And once again, we're able to bait out a Swampert, but that's fine because we can just no shield this. Hydro Cannon won't get the KO. And again, here i don't know why i'm not going for the payback it does do more neutral damage here but psy shock is going to be no shielded by the opponent so maybe if I went for payback there, I could have actually just taken out the Swampert, but either way, it doesn't matter too much. We have just seen a double Mud Boy team, so I am thinking maybe it will be the same team here. So we come in with Galissapod. We actually use the shield there. We're now going to fire off the Aerial Ace, and the opponent is going to let that go through. We are going to over farm here, and this is just going to be another Asset Spray, as it's too quick to be a Power Whip. So going to no shield this, and I will commit to a full farm down. We get the farm down there, and they've got Polyrath in the back. So I actually just swap into my Rev of Room, basically hoping to make it to an acid spray because if i can drop their defense then obviously an aerial ace will get the ko so we're gonna no shield that they go for the icy wind i'm gonna go for an acid spray they also no shield doesn't really matter we've got 100 energy already loaded gonna fire off the aerial ace aerial ace gets the final shield and we're able to make it to aerial ace number two and of course from this range with the debuff we take out the shadow polyrath and i'm able to take that game so GG to up over there, internet's going to see Jellicent in the lead. So again, pretty good lead matchup for Galissapod. I did lose some leads here, but I mean, I guess that kind of contributed to the very good run that I had with this team. But either way, going to fire off the Aerial Ace here after one more Shadow Claw. Aerial Ace goes unshielded, but that's fine with me. I'm now going to overfarm, going for an Aerial Ace just before they make it to the next charge move. And Aerial Ace is going to be shielded by the opponent. I'm going to shield and respect the damage from the Shadow Ball, and it is the Shadow Ball this time around. So, able to get the Shadow Claw farm down. They come in with Ludicolo. I'm actually going to bank the energy here. We swap into Bronzong, and we core break their backline with the Bronzong. I can just safely no shield this. The opponent is going to go for an Ice Punch there. So, again, kind of interesting to see lots of different movesets on Polyrath. Sometimes you do wonder if they're intentionally running Ice Punch, or if maybe they've just not got enough charge DMs and we're stuck with it. But either way, going to no shield here. Don't really care what they throw. The opponent goes for 
the dynamic punch, get in the KO, but we can just come in with the Rev of Room, get the Poison Jab farm down, and that is absolutely game over. The opponent recognizing it straight away, so they just concede the match there. So GG set up over there into next battle and we are going to be core broken by a Magnezone. Now Magnezone, probably the hardest answer to this team. There's really not a lot we can do other than try and land a liquidation. Unfortunately, that does not work out. So we come in with Bronzong. We are bulky enough to live a wild charge. So I call the bait there. Unfortunately, they didn't bait and we will go for a side shot. And because they dropped their defense, honestly, that probably would get the KO with a few more confusions. But unfortunately, they do shield that up now. We've got a two shield advantage. It's not going to help us that much. So we come back in with Galissapod. And at the last second, oh shield, it is the wild charge. That is good news as we do get the Shadow Core farm down. But they're going to come in with a Reggie Steel. So I'm going to fire off the liquidation here. And honestly, I make a pretty big mistake here. Going for liquidation. Liquidation doesn't drop their defense there. And now they do just barely outpace me to the charge. Move. Honestly, I should have just shielded that up there. Instead, I'm thinking Rever Rune can probably take this here. But unfortunately for me, the, po the opponents here are going to come in with the Polyrath. And they're running past. Power up punch. So, power up punch gonna absolutely destroy me. I can go for an acid spray and likewise drop their defense. So, we're also doing big damage with the fast moves, but it's just not gonna be enough here. So, gonna shield this up. It's not gonna matter. I'm not even gonna make it to another charge move. I don't get the farm down. The opponent outpaces me with that fast move damage. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's to open there into next battle. We see a Shadow Polyrath in the lead. Now, what I tried to do here was wait one turn to make sure they don't make a catch, but they're actually running Power Up Punch. And because I waited one turn as I reached the Aerial Ace there, it means that I didn't get the fast move through. So that's pretty annoying. And it means that, well, I mean, we can fire off the Aerial Ace here, but we will actually lose this now in the, well, zero to two shield scenario which i'm fine with at this point i'm not going to give them any extra farm so instead get a swap into my bronzong dealing huge damage with these confusions and i'm just going to no shield again it will just be a power up punch honestly it's really starting to chunk at this point but we finally get the farm down there they come in with the ferrothorn we're going to go straight for a payback and honestly i'm thinking maybe just save both my shields for my rev of room in the back and we should be fine so i'm going to no shield this as the opponent fires off an acid spray which was such an unnecessary bait like why why did they even bother doing that but either way gonna no shield once again it's another acid spray we actually live that we're now gonna swap into rev of room and at this point it's either gonna be an acid spray or a power whip don't really care whatever they throw they go for another acid spray there and they've got a ludicolo in the back so once again this is gonna be game over we can go straight for the overheat and overheat of course gets the one shot up against ludicolo and we can just fire off another overheat the opponent has just stopped attacking at this point gonna fully undercharge it with double debuff but of course, from this range, it will eventually get the KO up against the Ferrothorn, and I'm able to take that game. So GG set up over there into next battle. We see Pelipper in the lead. So finally, a very bad lead matchup for us. Gonna say swap into my Bronzong, and the opponent's gonna come in with a Thunderfang Steelix. Now this could be bad if they're running crunch if they're running earthquake then of course it's going to take them quite a while to get there but either way we fire off the payback i'm just going to no shield anyways and the opponent is going to go for that crunch there crunch doesn't drop my defense though i'm able to make it to another payback and if they no shield this honestly this will be very close and bronzong actually able to flip the match up up against the steelix but that Pelipper does have quite a lot of energy already, so not ideal. They get the farm down there. We come in with the Rev of Room. We can't really afford to shield this, so the opponent fires off the charge move. They actually go for the Resisted Hurricane, which does more damage, of course. And yeah, a bit, bit strange, but okay, we're going to shield that up there. We are now going to fire... Nope, never mind. I completely lost track of the energy. That had way more energy than I thought there. So unfortunately, not able to get the Poison Jab farm down. And they've got a Magnezone in the back. So my only win condition here is basically if the opponent, for whatever reason, decides to over farm in this situation and I make it to a liquidation, or if they just decide for whatever reason, not to shield the next charge we've coming from my rev of room. So we're going to play to the win condition, full send in the overheat, but unfortunately they do use their final shield and we do end up losing that game. But GG's took up over there into next battle and we see Lantern in the lead. So going to say swap into my Bronzong and the opponent's going to swap into Ferrothorn, fine with me. Thunder will do some decent damage here, but it's not going to do that much, but they actually just go for a power whip. So 
Again, not really sure if they're not running Thunder or if they just don't know their typings. But either way, gonna go for the payback there, dealing big damage. Gonna no shield once again here. And even if they go for Thunder, it's not gonna take me out. But again, it's just another power whip. Fine with me. We're gonna over farm, throwing at good timing, going for the Psy Shock. And Psy Shock from this range will get the KO. They come back in with the Lantern and I'm able to make it to the Psy Shock. But that's also a CMP tie there. As the opponent doesn't commit to the full farm down, Psy Shock does connect, it does big damage, and the opponent's gonna fire off a Surf to get rid of us, and that's absolutely fine with me. We can come in with the Rev of Room. I'm gonna play it safe here, just use my shield. I don't know what's in the back, but once again, I feel like with a shield advantage, or sorry, with a shield disadvantage, but two Pokemon still healthy, we should be fine in this matchup. And what maybe I should have done is go for an Acid Spray first before I swapped out there, just because, you know, the opponent might be able to double debuff me with Icy Winds before I eventually land an Aerial Ace, which will mean that the Aerial Ace won't get the KO. But either way, I don't really mind. They go for the Icy Wind there. Fine with me. Gonna no shield once again as the opponent goes for a second Icy Wind. And that will mean that we don't actually make it to the charge move. But it doesn't really matter. We can come in with the Rev of Room. This is resisted damage. But Overheat still gets the KO. We can come in and go for a full Poison Jab farm down. Taking out the Lantern. And I'm able to take that game. So GG's took up over there into the next battle. See a Galissapod mirror match. So honestly, a bit of a weird one because if we go for an area straight away and then make a catch, then that's not ideal. But we win CMP because you can see my Galissapod IVs aren't really PvP optimized. So we do end up having a higher attack stat there. I'm then going to swap, make a catch. Honestly, I was expecting the opponent to try and make a catch as well. And somehow we end up getting a full confusion in there, which I don't know how we did that but either way we're gonna bait out a gastrodon which is huge for me because river room would get completely mud slap farmed down up against this pokemon so we needed to bait this out and now we're gonna go for the payback payback will get a shield from the opponent i wouldn't have made it to two moves there so finally i did just full send the payback we're now going to come in with galissapod and gastrodon is fairly bulky so this liquidation won't quite get the ko here so maybe i could have just over farmed instead but either way we fire it off straight away they're going to make it to a body slam fight with me i can resist the mud slap damage so i go for the shadow Claw farm down here and let's see what the opponent wants to do the opponent comes in with a Ferrothorn, so we swap into our Rev of Root, and things are looking fine for us. I can just shield this first charge move here, as the opponent does full send the Thunder, and I'm just waiting for a potential catch. They swap back into Galissapod. I could have over farmed slightly more than that, but in the end, I go for the overheat, taking out Galissapod. I'm still going to outpace them to another overheat, and we actually lagged there, so I didn't throw straight away. But once again, even debuffed, overheat gets the one shot up against the Ferrothorn, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to opponent there into next battle, another Ferrothorn in the lead this time around. So once again, I will go for the Aerial Ace. If they throw straight away, like I mentioned, just happy to let a Power Whip go through. Power Whip does do some pretty substantial damage there, but it's okay, we can live that. We're now going to fire off an Aerial Ace, and I'm going to try and make a catch on the next Power Whip here, onto my Bronzong, and I'm able to get it through, and as well, get a Confusion through as I swap there, as we did swap slightly misaligned to when they threw but they're gonna come in with a ragey steel which is quite interesting very weak to a counter user in the lead but either way we go for a payback there we throw on tmp which is perfect and we're gonna no shield here but focus blast doesn't quite take us out there i'm not sure if they undercharged if they did then that was the perfect undercharge as they get the full lock on farm down and unfortunately that is very awkward for me because now i can go for a liquidation liquidation gets the defense drop so i'm thinking maybe we can go for a poison jab farm down here it will be double resisted so i'm gonna commit to it anyways come on river room and no we're barely not able to do so i had to throw there otherwise they would make it to a charge move and the opponent's actually gonna shield just to get a shield back from me as well so they're gonna go for the focus bars there luckily for me they don't make it to a zap cannon but they've got a shadow polyrath in the back and unfortunately we've seen this already like, this just isn't that great for us. Unless all shields are down, but they're not. They've still got a shield. They actually swap back into their Ferrothorn. I'm going to fire off the overheat here, but it doesn't really make a difference. This will get the KO, but we've dropped our attack by two stages. We couldn't win anyways, but we're just going to try full send the overheat. And overheat is going to grab the final shield. They get the counter farm down, and unfortunately, we do lose that game. So GG to open their internet battle, we see a Lucario in the lead. So this is fine with me. I'm not gonna throw straight away because first of all, we lose CMP and our liquidation 
probably would nearly KO from that range, but either way, I'm gonna go for an aerial ace here, and the reason for this is because the opponent does go for a power-up punch base, so I'm actually not gonna make it to an aerial ace and a liquidation, so instead, settling for back-to-back -back aerial aces, grabbing both shields from Lucario, and at this point, I'm just happy to let the move go through. They do full send the Thunder Punch this time around, but that's okay, we come in with the Bronzong, and they actually don't even commit to a Thunder Punch this time, so power-up punch, we do no shield, it still, it still does some pretty decent damage there, but they're gonna come in with a jealous and this is a great catch from the opponent, catching the payback onto their Ferrothorn. So, really nice catch there because obviously I saw a gelatin. My eyes lit up. I went for the payback, but they make the catch. But likewise, we're going to swap into our Ever Room, catch a power whip, which is fine with me. At this point, I'm not certain that a payback would get the one shot, so I'm going to play it safe, use my shield here, go for the poison jab farm down, and now I can just fire off an acid spray. And honestly, I don't know who wins CMP out of Bronzong and Jellicent, so we are going to, well, honestly, I should just like continue to over farm here. The opponent will throw a charge move, they go for surf, that actually doesn't get the KO there, so I'm going to fire off another acid spray. Acid spray is going to quad debuff their defense and we have a charge we've loaded I'm not sure if we would have won cmp there but either way payback gets the ko up against the jersey and i'm able to take that game so gg to the point there apologies for the uh pretty unoriginal leads that i'm seeing here like there's not much i can do about it but we see a shadow ferrothorn in the lead gonna shield up the power there this time because of course it is a shadow i kind of need to respect the damage there gonna fire off the aerial ace and again gonna try and make a catch no nope, never mind i actually just fire off the aerial ace here playing it slightly different here but we go for the aerial ace we're now gonna swap and we do make the catch this time around so we're still able to make that catch and again get a full confusion in for free now opponent comes in with a lucario fine with me we're gonna make it to a side shock and side shock should be grabbing the final shield from the opponent here but the opponent will be able to over farm they're gonna fire off a charge reef i'm just gonna no shield this as the opponent goes for a blaze kick there so we do have a little bit of residual energy, but the opponent did over farm with Lucario. I'm not certain if the Aerial Ace would have got the KO, so instead I don't actually bother throwing a charge Eve whatsoever. I'm going to shield that up as they go for a Thunder Punch. I'm now going to fire off the charge Eve just before they make it to one final Thunder Punch. Aerial Ace gets the KO, and let's see what the opponent wants to do. They're going to come in with a Mantine. We're going to swap into our Rever Room, and we should be fine here. They're probably going to swap back into their Ferrothorn at some point, so I'm not going to go for the Acid Spray straight away. They swap back into Ferrothorn, and I get too greedy. I didn't realize they were already at a charge roof there. I could have just fired off an Acid Spray, got the KO, and then still Acid Sprayed up against the Mantine, or even overheated it. And we had a lot of residual energy on Galissapod, but unfortunately, two Aerial Aces just barely won't get the KO there. And yeah, if I went for Liquidation, you see already that I wouldn't have made it to a second charge Eve, as they would have just barely outpaced me. So even if I got a debuff there, I still would have lost. But GG's to that opponent there. And into the final battle of this video, I do believe. And we're going to lead into another land turn here. So we're going to swap into Bronzong. And it's quite likely that Bronzong just core breaks their back line. They actually go for a Thunder there, which is very interesting. Obviously, typically, land turn going to run Thunderbolt as the charge move instead of Thunder. But Thunder does hit quite a lot harder there. Unfortunately, still not in range for them to just farm me down. And this point, I'm thinking, you know what? I can either grab both shields from the opponent or just take out the land turn here. So we go for the side shock. It actually doesn't get the KO, but we do get the confusion farm down so we're able to regain switch advantage here they come in with lucario and once again they will be able to throw on the cmp type with a potential aerial ace so gonna shield this they go for the thunder punch fine with me we are going to fire off the aerial ace and we will be able to fire off a second aerial ace just before they make it to the next charge you're gonna throw it straight away aerial ace from this range does get the ko and they've got an octillery in the back so very spicy pick we're gonna swap make a catch onto our river room as the opponent goes for a water pulse which does big damage up against the river room but they will not be able to lock on farmers down if they're running mud shot then that's a completely different story i probably would just lose this game but because they're running lock on they have to throw another charge move and now we can fire off an aerial ace get the ko up against octillery and i'm able to take that game so that's gonna be it for today's video if you did enjoy it please make sure you leave a like leave a comment letting me know and as well don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already and if you want to see more content like this in the 
future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shoutouts at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges, and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member. Your support is greatly appreciated. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.